I'm Rudy L. Curry. I'm the Dean of the School of Architecture. Thank you for joining us this evening for the first installment in our Technoglass Lecture 2023. So uh, first, let me thank our sponsors, Technoglass, who's sustained support. This is the eighth year, actually, that they are funding our lecture series. Their support allows us to maintain the high standards of the lecture, giving us the, the capacity to enlist the best and the greatest. So we are very thankful for this. I remind you that you can get the points for your continuing education with the AIA. So please contact Steve Fett if you'd like to have the credit. Uh, and we are delighted to start the season with uh, uh, Fabrizio Barozzi and Alberto Vega from uh, Barozzi Vega. So for just a few words about our speakers. Uh, Fabrizio grew up in Rivereto, Italy, studied architecture in Venice, uh, Seville and Paris taught at the International University in, of Catalonia in Barcelona, was also an associate professor at university in Girona, who also was a visiting professor at the Institute in, of Architecture in Venice, at MIT and at Cornell University, among other places. Alberto grew up in Santiago, Santiago de Compostela, he went to school uh, in architecture in the famous School of Architecture in Navarre. Actually, we are hosting uh, students and faculty from that school doing a workshop here uh, now. And uh, he also uh, taught at the International University of Catalonia and the Institute in Venice. So they are the co-founder of uh, Barozzi Vega, a Barcelona-based practice with an international reach and a focus on cultural, civic, and educational buildings. This work has been widely uh, exhibited, published in all the prestigious venues you can think of, and globally recognized as one of the leading voices in contemporary architecture. It's a remarkably distinct voice and I suspect this audience in particular will find it very compelling given, given how it manages to uh, align radical innovation with uh, historical continuity. And I know you're all familiar with this goal that we pursue vigorously at the school. Now, just let me mention just a few honors that this firm has gathered. The, a Jack Young Catalan Architect Award in 2007, the Barbara Capuchin International Architecture Award in 2011, the Gold Medal for Italian Architecture in 2012, the Design Vanguard Award in 2014, the Mies van der Rohe Award of European Architecture in 2015, the Reba Award for International Excellence in 2018, the Chicago Athenaeum International Award in 2019. By the way, this is the same award that was given to our studio building and Architectonica, the same year, I think. And in 2020, the Grand Prix Fritz Herger for the Musée Cantonal de, des Beaux-Arts in Lausanne. This is just, I'm just naming the few awards and these are like the grand slam of architectural recognition in architecture. So please join me in welcoming uh, our guest, Fabrizio and Alberto. Hi, hi good evening, everyone. Um, thank you to the Dean of the school for the introduction. And for sure, thank you for the invitation to have the opportunity to be here tonight with you to present some of our of our work. Um, tonight probably will be a kind of special lecture because uh, 
for different reasons and casualty, uh, both uh, Alberto and me, we are here. And so we decided to share this lecture. It's a quite unusual thing. I think during 18 years, almost 20 years uh, that we worked together, we never shared a lecture. So we will see what I say and what Alberto <laughs> say. Uh, but so for the reason we decided to share, the, I don't know, to, to, to organize uh, this evening, like uh, maybe more like a conversation between us uh, more spontaneous, maybe not so planned. And maybe also it's quite interesting for you to have this uh, double vision of our, of our work. Um, tonight, uh, we will present uh, four projects, uh, three recent building that we have finalized in the recent year, and one project that we have here in Miami. And all these four projects are related with, with art. Uh, the first two are two fine art museum that we built in Switzerland, and the other two are two artist residencies. No? So there is this kind of common uh, thread that link all the, all the project. But before to start and to present the, the work, maybe some, some word to present ourselves, no? as the, the Dean mentioned, uh, Alberto is Spanish, I'm Italian, so we started to work together in Barcelona in 2004. Um, and in a certain way, I think uh, uh, this the story of the office, our uh, biography has marked in a, I think in a strong way, or influenced our, our work. Since the beginning, we start to work uh, really uh, internationally, participate in different competition. And, and this uh, situation that, uh, so this situation in which we uh, moved in that year, um, I think give us the opportunity to reflect about certain notion that for us uh, start to be important. No? When we started, we start to uh, yeah to make projects around Europe. We always felt Europe was as our home in some way. Uh, but every time we started a project, we uh, we wondering how our project were able to preserve uh, the specificity of the place in which we will uh, work. It, you know? How to do project able to uh, preserve the, the diversity, the uniqueness, the special uh, character of a place. No? So uh, since the beginning, our architecture tried to find tools able to establish a really intimate and deep and, and sensible relationship with the places in which uh, we work at. Uh, so, we, in some way, our architecture at the beginning was uh, maybe uh, we can say a little bit contextualist. No, we really wanted to work with uh, the element that give identity to different places. So probably during the first year, uh, this uh, uh, reflection about the notion of specificity as market in a very good way, in a very deep way, our way of working. Then for sure, the studio uh, continues to work again, again, uh, he developed certain ideas. And I think after our, uh, during a period we worked a lot in Switzerland, during 10 years doing museums and other things. And step by step, uh, we elaborated, we go deep a little bit more in our uh, approach towards architecture. And finally in 2016 at the Biennale in Venice, we were invited to make an, an installation there. And also in that occasion, uh, we wrote a kind of small manifesto of our practice. And this that manifesto was, uh, the title of the, that manifesto was a sentimental monumentality. In that small text that you can find uh, in our publication and around, essentially we try to explain uh, the basic attitude of our work towards architecture. 
we declare in that manifesto that all our building uh, strive to find a balance between the specificity of the place and uh, the autonomy of the form. This uh, constitutional dichotomy is really what drives our, our work. And, and, and it is a paradox. It is really something to work with, uh, something that is uh, uh, opposite. You know? How to be specific, how to be contextually, how to establish a deep and sensitive relationship with the identitary character of a place, but at the same time, be conscious that architecture has a, uh, an objective value uh, per se. No? An, an object of architecture has a value in itself in some way. No? So um, we, our work, it really fit in the middle of these two opposite condition, no? and this paradox in some way how to belong to a place, not only a place, to a culture, to atmosphere, to a, a, a reality, no? but at the same time, be conscious that, an that this object should have a value independently from the context. No? And this dichotomy is exactly what uh, mark our work. And I think that the project that we will present today, I hope, they will uh, explain you know, this uh, theoretical approach of our uh, practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think like uh, Ferriti was explaining, uh, during these years we have been basically thinking, and, and perhaps this is going to be useful for you, thinking about how these two words could shape somehow the way we work, how to be specific, but at the same time how to work in places that we didn't know with uh trying to understand what was our value as architects working abroad or working now for example in the united states so uh, this process or this continuous process along the last um basically since we started our practice uh has shaped somehow uh, what we try to do today so i am you to to uh in your in your next future i mean try to think about always uh, what's the goal and what's 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 somehow I mean the the path you want to follow thinking about the architecture you want to do because I mean for us was really important during these years. So maybe we can start to present some some projects that maybe highlight a little bit better this uh, uh, initial thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first project that we will present is a fine art museum that we uh, finalized a few years ago in Kur in Switzerland. Uh, Kur is a small uh, city in the Graubünden region in the German, Swiss German uh, part of, uh, of Switzerland. Um, this is a small museum, quite a small museum, but. Uh, this museum has a very excellent collection uh, it's based on uh, essentially uh, they have a huge important collection about German expressions. These are some uh, uh, paintings that they have. They are, the, the collection is very well organized, well structured. It's a small museum but with a very, very precise, uh, how to say, um, curatorial uh, uh, Purpose in some way. These are some of these uh, of these painting that they, they have. In some way, also the the these kind of organization of the collection have also give us some idea about how to how to do the, the project. No? Um, the project was an extension of an original building. This picture shows the original uh, uh, museum. Um, this was a villa that was made originally made in the 18th century. It was a villa for a rich uh, merchant uh, that import textile from Egypt. Uh, after that, uh, and, and it's, it's a quite bizarre and, and eclectic building because it was uh, it is it is a uh, neoclassical uh, building directly inspired by. Palladio architecture. In fact, we will see that the plan is really inspired by the rotonda, the Palladio. 
but there is an, a kind of decoration and ornamentation in, in the facade, in the interior, in the pavement, that has a kind of uh, orientalist taste in some way. Uh, this uh, is related with the with the period in which has been uh, made this uh, this building, but also because uh, it was a kind of villa no, of this merchant that imported textile from Egypt and some way he wanted to make a kind of homage to, to the country that uh, make its rich in some way. Uh, so um, a few years later uh, that this uh, building became the, the museum, um, there was a, an important restoration and Peter Zuntor uh, refurbishment uh, the first floor. He had these two uh, winter garden in with this very beautiful winter garden with this kind of filly crane in, in wood and he also reorganized uh, the basement for host uh, temporary exhibition mm -hmm. uh, around uh, this kind of eclectical of bizarre building but quite interesting um, uh, for example when you enter you find two sphinx in the entry which is I feel a bit strange weird. and weird yeah. in the middle of the or, or, of Switzerland. And around this building, there is a small, very small garden in some way, a romantic garden with uh, several um, statues. And this small garden create a kind of buffer between this, the villa and the environment in some way. No? Uh, these images show one of the most beautiful rooms in the interior in which you can really perceive this kind of uh, orientalistic uh, taste. taste and, and approach that uh, conform the pavement. So in some way, these two elements, uh, the fact that there was this kind of uh, oriental uh, link in some way, and also the fact that the building was really uh, inspired by the Palladio architecture, these two elements were uh, really the, the, I can say, the, the identitary character of this, uh, of this building. Now, and since the beginning, we wanted to work with that. Now, we really love to work with just we, what we can find in a place. No? We like to, uh, we like to understand which are really the element that mark a place, the element that uh, make this place or that place really that place, the, 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 and, and work with it and see how we can transform or reinterpret it or use it in order to create an architecture that is able to establish this intimate relationship with uh, an environment, a place, but not in a very direct uh, way, not just to, no, but in a more subtle way, no? maybe in a more um, evanescent way. No? So since the beginning, uh, uh, we had uh, the idea that um, this kind of uh, absolute idea that conform the, uh, the example of the, the original example of, of the Palladium, uh, Rotonda, maybe should uh, have a kind of importance in our project. No? So, this represent a really a kind of absolute archi architecture. Really, it is an autonomous piece of architecture that is confront with the uh, with environment, with the, with, with the reality, with the place, et cetera, et cetera. So step by step, uh, we started to understand that probably the extension, uh, the new extension, our project should work as a kind of diptych with the original no? So try to make a, a new building that was able to interpret it and integrate and use what the simple things that we have found there, the identitary character that mark a place and establish a new autonomous piece able to join the original one and create a kind of uh, ensemble of uh, all together. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the, the result of this of this approach in which uh, in which our building uh, it conform really an independent piece but is 
is deeply related with the original one. We stand in some way the, uh, the geometry of the original building uh, and this uh, uh, idea of a double symmetry that mark the original building is still present in our, in our building. And, and we, we work with the same element we have found, the entry, uh, the, the central core, etc. Um, but this drawing also, I think it's a drawing that we like a lot because uh, it's a drawing very synthetic, very simple, very basic. The new extension, the new building, it is conformed by just these two cores that contain all the vertical uh, circulation and they create the structure of the entire building and organize in the middle this small foyer which is, is intended as a little bit as a small plaza, over a plaza, a, a, a public uh, space inside of, of our building. Oh, and this image represents a little bit the, the proposal, the build when we are finishing. And yeah, so the proposal in some way, I can describe it as a, uh, a neo palladian building that is over of, or, or um, organized and, and in which there is a kind of uh, um, orientalistic in some way uh, uh, ornamentation in the facade in this bas relief that conform the, the facade in some way each building the original one and the extension uh, has the same character. They they are made with the same ingredient in some way, you know? but everyone it preserve its own uh, its own character, so uh, its own autonomy. But together they are able to establish this uh, and conform a, a urban unit, a coherent a coherent urban unit. I, I, I think that when the when we did this project. Um, I mean, the fact of doing the extension of an historic building obliges us to think about these words that Fabrizio was um, uh, describing. I mean, the word character. Uh, we, we knew how, how, I mean, the risk when extending an historic building is to, fail, to, to fall into keeping the same language or making very direct references to the historic building. Uh, we wanted to have a, car, a building deeply rooted with the system, but, but with its own identity, its own expression, being conscious of the place where we were, but at the same time proposing something that could uh, be understood, as we said uh, at, at the beginning of the presentation, as a, another part of the ensemble. So these ideas of how to root deeply uh, the new building with the existing but at the same time, go beyond that fact and propose a new identity was really the challenge when we did the project. And the challenge when we started to think about how to deal with all the elements around us. Yeah, in fact, what we really like uh, is to work in continuity with something. No? In fact, recently we, uh, uh, we presented, we have the opportunity to present uh, uh, the first uh, monographic exhibition of our work in Venice and, and in Milano, and we titled our first monographic exhibition on continuity. No? I think it's important this notion of how to work in continuity, how to give uh, a new step in a history, but not in a direct way, just to discover how to a reality can evolve in an unexpected way, probably something really important. It's something important for us because it's a strategy that permits to preserve what I mentioned at the beginning, the uniqueness of the place. Uh, we, and, and also it is important because maybe um, it's a tool in order to uh, prevent, to create a generic architecture. During the last decade, we has been uh, around it in, in the in the architectonical panorama. This notion of, about to work to, to work with the idea of generic has been really important. And essentially, our work tried to uh, fight again this notion you know, and preserve the uniqueness of, of place. And all our uh, uh, our uh, our work really is is uh, rounded this idea of what means really uh, working in continuity and for us probably is is means work with something that you simply found it and and 
discover a new possibility for these these things. So these are other images that present uh, the building, but there is one important thing. So I know I think there is another important uh, notion that uh, organize all our architecture. And what we want to do, especially because the majority of our architecture are public building, uh, we want to create a civic architecture. We never understand our project as isolated building, but we really wanted to insert it in a, in a large context, in a urban context. And you want, we want to create in some way a, a, a very consolidated city in some way around us no so and how to work with the public space uh it is always crucial in all our projects sometimes there are projects that in which this uh, approach is much more evident and some other one is more uh difficult to read uh, at the first glimpse but uh, it continues to be crucial no? here for example one of the main decision of the project has been really to reduce at the maximum the footprint of this building in order to create uh, this kind of uh, uh, small mineral place basement uh, uh, or plinth around the building and apparently when you see uh, when you see the building uh, maybe it's not important, but for us, when we conceived the building, was really a starting point, you know? because these even smaller uh, uh, void around the building permit in some way uh, uh, give the right scale to the building, establishing the uh, a precise relationship with the original building, but also also um, with, with, our surroundings, no? with the surrounding how to fit no this this in all our product we try to control at the maximum the scale of the building and and because they need to be inserted in a very natural way in in its environment without friction no? it should be something that uh, is able to stay there no? we wanted to and maybe this is a component of another important things that uh, always run that our mind you now we want to transmit a certain sense of permanence sense of gravity uh, we, we want that the building stay and have weight and they are able to to deeply um, are deeply uh, I don't know how to say integrated in in, in the context now and and how to organize the public space is one important tool that permit to give to this building this kind of uh, capacity to stay naturally placed no uh, or uh, de deposited in a in a context but in many cases also uh in order to create this kind of relationship with the contest uh we approach we, we try to have a very some cases radical approach also to the program or to how to organize the program. No? The secret, for example, in on this project is that we rain in order because we wanted to reduce the footprint, create this kind of uh, uh, breath, uh, area around the building. We decided to reinvert uh, the program and we organize all the uh, exhibition area in the in the basement underground. No? So what emerged is just the a small building that uh, hosts the main public function and all the exhibition area are uh, located underground mm -hmm. and also this permit to establish the connection with the original building and the, with the space organized uh, re refurbished by by Zunctor without any connection i think that this is something that well most of you are students so you will discover it in the next years now we're making a project uh the project applies to you to make to take decisions, to sacrifice certain things, to assume that uh, there are a hierarchy in terms of what what really matters when doing a project. In our case, this idea of the public space, how to relate with the city, how to really use as an engine of thinking the city as the key factor when when uh, designing the project. Uh, took us to the to the point of making this radical decision with the program. You know? Why not moving the galleries underground? Why not really uh, start composing the, the the project and uh, along the galleries as really a kind of journey uh, 
underground, taking us towards a new to, to the existing building and trying to generate somehow a new loop that could somehow help us to have the public space that we wanted to have up, uh, above ground. So this idea of um, sacrificing somehow certain aspects of the project uh, is not due to a kind of uh, just a desire. It's because we had in mind that this, this, this fact of working within the city with the idea of what means public for us, what means public space for us, was really uh, the starting points from half as we were explaining before. So continues to present the project. Uh, here is the foyer. The foyer essentially declare this uh, uh, dependent, the, this relationship with the historical uh, building, the historical building, the facade of the historical building, the facade of the new foyer. Uh, from here, there is a kind of generous uh, staircase that bring you down into the exhibition area. Uh, all the interior is made in concrete, but then when you enter in the in the, the temporary in the gallery, the materiality is different. So, and this is the plan of the first uh, uh, level, the, the underground. And here, it's uh, you understand here this very clearly. I think this relationship with this idea, you know, it's, it's it could be uh, a kind of. Uh, Palladian plan is really just a composition, a sequence of well proportioned room uh, that surround these two cores. And so, you know, this, I think it's very evident this uh, I don't know, relationship with this idea. In some way, you know? um, these are a few images of the, but we cannot uh, stay here too long. Uh, these are the images of the room. Essentially, uh, what we are using. We, because the building was underground, we put a new G4 in order to give a certain uh, create general space uh, and also how to work with the artificial light. Mm -hmm. And they work quite well, so re really, because we want to avoid the feeling to go down. No? Uh, it, it looks easy. It's, I mean, it was a challenge somehow to compose a sequence of spaces being on the ground, being alone. I mean, because when you work above ground, you, you always have some help, you know, the city helps you or the surrounding helps you to compose something. But being on the ground, being alone somehow, just thinking about the right proportion, uh, the right dimensions for everything, how to compose something that can be comfortable and can avoid somehow the feeling of being um, underground when visiting the museum was a challenge. And it was a reflection of something that really matters for us as architects, which is to reflect about the fundamentals of our profession somehow, uh, how to deal with light, how to deal with the dimensions of something, which is the right height for in the space, which is the right width for in the space. So sounds easy somehow, but some of the times it's one of the most difficult things no, to decide. Oh, uh, this is a connection with uh, the historical building and the, the lower level uh, is a very flexible space and I think here declare our effort that we made in all the project to reduce really uh, the architecture to its minimum term. You know, there are just these two core and, uh, and the wall that uh, create the space, nothing else. You know. uh, the interior is just a flexible space that can you divide, et cetera, et cetera. So we really strive to, to have, uh, uh, no, with just a few important elements to compose the entire project. You know. Uh, and here I think it's quite uh, clear this this uh, this effort. No? Some other images of this uh, level, uh, yeah, very quickly. Because, no, and and what is important in all our reading is also the, the fact that how to build. You know, how how so we intend the materiality of the building as a tool that is able to intensify this intimate relationship with uh, an environment. Maybe for the reason also, if you look at our different project, everyone uh, has its own material. There's, there's no a code that we replicate in different uh, buildings. There is something for sure that uh, gives coherence along our entire um, production, but everyone, it's really a, a, a bespoke element uh, that try to intensify this uh, this link with the environment. 
No? The main, probably the more main characteristic of this building was the facade that we consider really as a kind of vast relief, no? able to establish this conceptual link with the ornamentation that characterized this historical building. But it is also important to because this is not just an ornamentation, but it's really a technical element. No? Uh, uh, what we are interested in is also to go deep in this relationship between technique and ornament in some way. No? Mm -hmm. uh, if an element uh, is able to give to the project a very technical uh, function, is no more ornamentation than other things. No? Mm -hmm. The facade is, well, it's composed by, by these prefab panels and it's concrete. And it's true that it's not just an ornament. I mean, it deals with all the needs that the contemporary facade uh, has to fulfill. It helps us to integrate the openings. It helps us to, to somehow solve, um, yeah, as I said, all the technical needs. And on the other hand, help us, of course, to achieve values with the facade, as how to play with, with, with the texture, how to play with the colors of the concrete, how to increase the feeling when raining, for example, how to give depth to, to a surface, and as Fabrizio said, have help us to deal with, for example, in this case, with, with, with the entrance to the loading dock, how to deal with, with all the technical elements that can somehow enhance just the idea of the ornament, linking this with, with, uh, with a need, which is in this case, for example, how to integrate a huge technical door for the loading dock. Mm -hmm. And for example, inside of yeah, at the beginning, you know, in the middle of the presentation, I say that sometimes we approach in a quite radical way the organization, the programmatical organization of the building. No? And here, for example, there is a, one secret in some way, which is quite important. No? In order to reduce footprint, in order to find the right scale for the building, essentially we propose uh, to use the foyer not only with the welcoming area for the, the museum but also as a loading dock hmm. and we create we force it the creation of different kind of synergy of program that apparently are not uh, are opposite in some way, you know? uh, but but uh, sometimes also we well no in many cases we find this kind of how to interpret a different program you know? so this is the reason why also inside of this very rigid, precise, double symmetry that are organized in Thai building, there is one distortion and precise is this element, this loading dock, this, the door that uh, permits to attract a light into the most novel area of the, of the museum. Uh, if we continue, so we present the second uh, museum that we did in Switzerland. This is a completely different uh, uh, museum than the, the previous one. It, it is really the first uh, competition that we won. And, but this has been the, uh, the last one that we have uh, uh, finalized. Um, this is a Fanar Abuzar Museum, a Fanar Museum that uh, the major collection running about uh, one local artist, uh, Valotton, Felix Valotton, which is an important impressionist art, uh, artist. These are some paintings of this building, but also the collection of this museum is much more extensive, more not so well organized as the Incur, but uh, has contemporary um, um, art like uh, um, Penone or Soulage, for example. No? So the, the materiality of the gallery of Incur depended also by the, or the collection that they had. No? And the difference is, and you will see that the materiality here in Lausanne has changed also because of the collection work. A difference in a way. In order to understand uh, this project, it is important to explain it a little bit the genesis of the project. Um, I think 15 years ago, or five years before we started the, the project, there, there uh, was a previous competition in order to do the museum on the lake, essentially, more or less in this area. Uh, they made a competition that was a winner, but then uh, the city of Lausanne rejected the project. Uh, the citizens say they didn't want it to make a new fine art museum in a very natural uh, area around the lake. And in some way, they didn't declare that a fine art museum is not just a beautiful piece, uh, place it in a meravellous environment, but should be something more, should be 
uh, able in some way to transform the city. Um, after this, uh, 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 this operation that uh, failed, the authorities have had the courage to redo a new uh, competition, and they completely changed the, 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 the strategy. So, you know? so um, in, instead to uh, organize, so to select a site in a natural environment, beautiful along the, uh, the Lac Le Mans, we are in Lausanne, they decided to work in the city center in this area, uh, in a um, in a huge uh, area, industrial area, full of uh, uh, building uh, uh, devoted to the maintenance of the train, close to the train station. So the idea was to use the museum as an element that is able to transform a kind of uh, difficult part of the city and and regenerate really. Uh, an entire part of the city, no? and I think it's quite beautiful this uh, this this challenge the authority proposed, no? because they also this um, is a reflection about what means to do a contemporary a fine art museum museum today. No? It's not just an object to expose something, but it's it's an architecture that should really transform. Uh, the city, so, and I think it's interesting to to for you to know that it, it was a private site. These were the the warehouses for the maintainers, as Rubita said, and it, somehow it was unknown by the citizens. So it was at the city center, uh, but it was a private property. So really, it was a huge opportunity for the architects to somehow rediscover the potential of this area, and as a consequence, rediscover the potential of the city. And I think that this reflection, uh, how to rediscover the city, is in this case the most important reflection about this project. So, in fact, this this diagram show uh, how uh, this area was was a really big area, more than uh, two uh, hectares there, full of buildings with a lot of this industrial. Building. There's one one building here, the building that you saw before this one. Um, was the only historical building, which not uh, a great value in terms of architecture, but it was a kind of uh, uh, yeah, a relevant building in some way in the town. You know? So uh, when we started to, to do the, the competition at the beginning, we really uh, started to transform, modificate, uh, reinterpret, do something with this building. Then, for the, we started to understand that it was really impossible to transform this original building into a fine art museum with all the condition that a museum should have. But also, we started to understand that in this particular proposal, uh, maybe trying to create a new part of the city, try to create a, a urban narrative was more important than the object in itself, or at least the architecture, the object in itself should became after the, the urbanistic strategy that we uh, wanted to put in place. So our focus uh, for the competition moved from the uh, oracle buildings from the object towards the urban condition. No? So we started to look at references in which uh, how to say architecture and urban space uh, blended in some way. You know? In which, for example, this a marvelous uh, project is this is the Uffizi in Florence, you know? where you didn't understand exactly if this is just an architecture or it is a place, because the importance of the public space is absolutely capital in this building. The 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 the, the, the architecture is just the frame of the of the urban. No? So if we pass very quickly to some sketching we did, you start, these are the very, very early uh, uh, sketches, we part of the sketch we did, in which the, uh, you notice that the importance is not really about what's happened here in the, in the building in itself, but what is marked is really the void. The, the, the this kind of plaza, the kind of public space, no? and suddenly the, this void started to be much more. Every step was much more prominent, more prominent, no? and finally, this is one of the first in which all the the buildings 
because I forgot to mention that uh, the authorities wanted to organize the, not only the fine art uh, museum, but also the museum of the design and the museum of photography. So they really wanted to place in this area the three uh, main museum of the of the of the city. No? So uh, in these sketches, essentially, the museum started just to conform a kind of uh, scene, a kind of frame around the core uh, that is com that was composed by this kind of long esplanade, long plaza, able to be linked with the plaza in front of the of the uh, of the train station. No? So uh, again, the, this very complex site. Uh, with a lot of condition, three museums, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, has been solved in a very, very precise and simple way. Just three simple objects that create this kind of new plaza that became really the core, the most important thing of this of this proposal. This was uh, the the model that we presented to the to the competition, there was a proposal during the competition you now with the three museum and this kind of long esplanade that uh, became the core. And after a few years when we started, there was another competition and uh, for the other two museum and they, for different reasons, were long and difficult to explain now, but they combined just one piece. No? So, and this uh, draw represents uh, a long effort in order to resolve the complexity of the site, the complexity of the program with just two elements. As simple as that. No? But everyone has a really, uh, uh, they are super in some way precise. No? Everyone, one mark the end, the other defined the new uh, public space. No? Um, so once we establish this uh, uh, criteria, this urban criteria, when we decided that the plaza probably was the most important thing, the core of this new quarter for art, uh, the reflection, the museum arrived really directly, very easily. We started to understand that the museum has an inhabited wall able to conform this new public space and able to divide the new public space from the, uh, the, the train the, uh, from the, the, the train here in some way. No? So really, we started to uh, develop this kind of new technology, no? because it's, it's really it's a very elongated building that is really create a wall, a big wall in some way, uh, that has been inhabited by, by, by art. No? But this approach arrived very easily after we decided that uh, um, and the, this this urban strategy in some way. I, I, I think it's important to point out too that the brief of the competition aimed to to keep it existing, to keep the warehouse somehow, as we explained at the beginning, and somehow to transform in it. Uh, this reflection about the city took us to the point to somehow remove the existing. And I think that's another topic that we tried to develop uh, during the competition how to deal with the existing, perhaps in a non-evident way. So the fact of the public space took us to this kind of um, proposal, this, in, this, this rectangular piece that tries to compose the best public space, tries to deal with the train tracks, tries, try, tries to deal with the basics too here, like how to protect the public space from the train tracks, from the dust, from the noise, how to generate an atmosphere. But the challenge of this piece was to how to deal with the existing in a non-evident way, how to find links with the old warehouses and how to provoke somehow that the memory could link the, the existing warehouse with the new architecture. And I think that's some quite important in, uh, theme in, in, in this project. I mean, how to really find this unexpected uh, moment into the project that Fabrizio was explaining in court to you know how, how to deal and how to get the unexpected uh, that, that you can discover when designing. Yeah, and in fact, so from one hand, because of this urban strategy, we really uh, uh, decided to remove a big part of the this historical building. But from other side, we started to envisioning uh, or, or, or wondering what means to preserve something. 
some time, maybe it preserves something, doesn't mean to preserve a uh, too cool uh, one piece, but maybe uh, it means to preserve several fragments that could all together are able to create a kind of constellation that preserve in some way the atmosphere and the, and the memory of this place. Uh, for the reason the project started to work with this uh, Finding elements, no? The arcade here, we preserve the pavement of the old, uh, the other buildings, no? And we preserve this kind of small piece of the historical building, just a, the, the, in terms of dimension, quite uh, small, but uh, that uh, was maybe the most important element of this of this building. No? And we started to build the new museum really around this. So this element it doesn't uh, uh, is not just an, uh, something anecdotal, but is really the starting point of the entire new uh, new building. No? Um, so in this aerial view, suddenly you perceive these two main factors. From one side, the building act as the other huge uh, building, industrial building that uh, are placed along the train and create this new uh, public space here. So it's really precise the relationship with the urban in some way. And from the other side, you start to, pres to preserve the importance of this uh, uh, pre-existing element that we preserve and, and which became really the main uh, element of the new of the new museum. No? So the the the, 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 uh, the museum is quite big uh, in some way, but we strive also to to find this natural insertion into the city. No? In spite of the dimension of the building, it sits perfectly in the in the in the surrounding in some way. No? And this is uh, the view when you arrive into the in, inside of this new area. No? I think this image, this I don't know, uh, presents something that, uh, as I mentioned, because it's really important for us. This is really a specific building for this specific site in some way, but at the same time, it's a very independent, abstract, and autonomy piece. No? It's really a declaration of this, of that dichotomy that I presented at the beginning. No? It's an, an element that really it finds the architecture really strive to find this balance between to belong to be specific for the place but also to preserve this kind of autonomy of the form this consciousness that architecture has an object value no? so and the building uh, after all the reflection about the urban strategy etc cetera, etc cetera, um, specific because it's essentially try to preserve this kind of industrial character that uh, conform of the entire area is is a kind of uh, a container for art has this kind of industrial resonances also in its in the materialities all it's completely made in in brick in the, in the facade in some way you know? it is but uh, and but also has this kind of condition is really an abstract piece in some way you know? mm -hmm close to the train station to the tracks this idea of rhythm the idea that the repetition of an element could compose the entire elevation something linked with industrial parts of the site but something at the other on the other hand uh, able to deal with the technical needs of how to introduce natural light into the museum so all these uh, themes and all these um, elements were the elements that helped us to to understand which would be somehow the character of the of the building. So and this is another image that represents the relationship with the train station and the public space during the construction. Uh, so what means to preserve? No, I, I say. So we started to interrogate ourselves how to uh, work with this kind of the memory of, of, of this art in some way. No? And finally, in this the drawing represents quite well that probably the, the, the architectural strategy that we wanted to, to organize was in some way a very classical strategy in some way. We found this element, you know, this small 
part of the pre-existing building that can become the figure, no, the, the, the most prominent element, and the new building is just composed a background in some way, no, and this kind of relationship between this prominent and, and the figure and, and the, the background is a kind of very very basic, very classical relations in some way. No? And, and this image declared the importance of this, of this element. Uh, from this size, the museum, just some information, it's very opaque, very close, also because there was a, a law that uh, obliged to protect all the gallery from, from, from the train. So it's just a neutral uh, background in some way. But from the other side, the rhythm of this vertical element uh, create a facade very, very porous, very, very open toward the uh, toward the, the plaza. Apparently, it is a kind of hermetic building, but in reality, is not at all like that. Mm -hmm. Then we will see why. So behind this element act as a, a element that control the northern line. This is a north facade into the gallery. No? Uh, this image is playing the the what no no the preservation of the soul because. There is an important thing in this major urban transformation uh, that happens all around the world. In many cases, you really lost the the, the character of this place, mm -hmm. the intensity. And what we wanted to do here is to, for sure, transform the city into something new, you know, in this new quarter of the earth. But we really wanted to preserve the character, the intensity, the atmosphere of this place. No? And, and, and I think all the element, uh, all together, how we preserve this small fragment of the existing pavement, the fragment of the facade, and the building it is in itself are able to preserve in some way um, yeah, the atmosphere of this piece. No? This image, uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> explains the porosity of the building toward this uh, uh, the, the plaza. No? The ground floor is essentially completely open toward the toward this new new plaza because we wanted to activate it. No? Um, but we can pass through very quickly. If not, we are a little bit longer. Uh, the ground floor, essentially, uh, the, the museum is an extension of the public space in, inside of the building. In the ground floor, the place is the, the, the main uh, foyer that is linked with the pre-existing element. There is the auditorium, the cafe, the bookshop, uh, an art space uh, here. No? So really, we intended uh, this notion uh, that we wanted to create really a civic architecture is well explained in this in this plan, in which essentially the public uh, space enter uh, into the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, what is important to uh, here's uh, in this uh, so uh, all the projects start from here from this pre-existing element. No? We mark it in a specular way the entry here and. And then we built this new high foyer linked with the uh, historical piece no? after crossing this low entry here. Um, the sequence of these images, I think they declare in a very, I say, precise way what we intend to work in continuity with something. No? We just uh, uh, this kind of how to transform founded object in in a new things in an unexpected things. No, so this was an original um, images of this historical building. Is the probably the most emotional element of this element was this huge uh, arched window facing south. This element that permit to catch the south light and establish from and, and bring into the building, but also establish this visual relationship with the trains. You know? And we build a new building around it in some way. You know? And finally, this is the final result. You know? It's something, this is a completely new space, a contemporary space, but which is linked with this historical element. You know? What means to work in continuity with something? For us probably is this sequence is explain visually what we uh, intend no, for um, for yeah, this relationship. Uh, very quickly, some other images of, of the foyer. 
on the ground floor here is the art space uh, that we have in the ground floor that uh, is directly linked with uh, the outdoors so that people can see this area dedicated for young artists. The building is super pragmatic, has the core very, very pragmatic. So the foyer uh, is the starting point from one side, spaces for temporary gallery from the other side, spaces for permanent gallery at the end, atelier, et cetera, et cetera. It built by its sector in some, in some way. No? Uh, around the central foyer, there is these two stairs that bring you up. There's another view of this one. Um, first floor, you arrive in this uh, kind of vestibule and then you enter into the, the gallery here and there. And there is another stairs that permit to move through the buildings uh, without going in to, to come back in the same. In the, this is a loop of visiting inside of the building. But um, we decided to all the public space as a kind of materiality that deal with natural light, this kind of mineral atmosphere in some way. Mm -hmm. These are the vestibule. But then here, a difference of course, when we enter into the gallery, the materiality change. Here we work with wood because it's permit to present both contemporary art, but also classical art. In some way. So the collection that the museum has marked in some way is also the material decision of the of the gallery. And when, when thinking about museums, I think that because we are today talking about museums and spaces, uh, spaces devoted to artists through artwork, we like to start always the presentation of the projects showing the artworks, the paintings. And it's not something casual. I mean, we are always conscious that a museum is the perfect background for the artwork. So our commitment is to find the perfect background. The, I mean, the museum, of course, Lausanne and Incur, and our aim was to, yeah, to provoke a better relationship with the city, to transform the city throughout our eyes, of course, trying to get the best of the places where we work. But these are museums, these are spaces devoted to art. So this idea of compose the best background for the artworks, how to deal with the natural light, how to achieve the perfect combination of materials that permits to establish a dialogue between architecture and artworks. I think that's that's something that perhaps, I think we discovered uh, when designing these two buildings and made us conscious about the importance of understand that, I mean, Artwork doesn't exist if you don't achieve the perfect conditions to, to, to look at it. If you are not conscious that really uh, you can establish that conversation because there is something around you that helps, helps you to, to establish it. So I think that uh, that's why I like uh, starting the, 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 I mean, the presentation of the project with artworks because these, they are the main, the main roles in this building. At the end of sequence, this is a section and there is, in order to create this kind of uh, loop of visiting inside of building, uh, we introduce a, a stairs that essentially establish a link with the geography in some way and also permit the visit. It has some stairs that really cut the building. This is a, not just a stair, but a place for small speech or presentation or for kids, et cetera, et cetera. From one side, uh, you and then we, we, we will the stair will face this new plaza, and from the other side, when you arrive here, is the only point in which you have uh, a vision towards uh, the geography in some way. No? So it's uh, an element that permits to establish the relationship with the and and also create a pause inside a uh, silence inside of uh, inside of the visit. This is the reason why the entire building is very hermetic. Just we have just this line, but this is just one element that uh, uh, move out from this limit that precisely is this is this is theirs. Um, the upper floor, uh, similar to Kur, declare against this effort in order to be to create synthetic architecture. This is a kind of huge museum that essentially it's organized by just five cores. Create the structure, organize the program, and also give a, a sense of a constructive sense to uh, to the building. And this is not an obvious thing, no? uh, uh, but doing very much with just a few elements is also uh, what we want to do with the architecture. No? 
Um, another important element is the, the ceiling, uh, the, the roof. Uh, the roof uh, is really, uh, there is a catch northern light. It's really a very complex and sophisticated element because of the inclination, how to cut, how they avoid the uh, overheating of the space, of the gallery, etc., etc. But um, it's a very technical and sophisticated element. Now we can spend hours to describe it, but what we tried to do is really to integrate this element and, and uh, define this element in a very effortless way. It's just a roof that is very neutral, that control the light. No, it doesn't declare really all the structural effort that uh, it makes. No, uh, it's not apparently it's a very light element, even if the structure is is, is massive in some way. Let, let, let me jump in here. I mean, we like to show the drawings because, I mean, this is the final result. No, but. What's the way to get to this point? Um, and we like to show the drawings because uh, the way to get to this point is just making drawings. We are architects, and we you need to understand. We need to understand uh, at its minimum detail how something works. Uh, what's the difference between five inches and six inches? What's the difference between this angle and the other angle? Uh, so. I think that this drawing is quite important because now, well, now it's just a drawing. You can, I mean, criticize it or not. But for us, how to us to understand deeply uh, what we wanted to do and what we wanted to get at this ceiling and how to transmit that with this somehow sophisticated and quite simple approach, but complex in the time in in, in it, complex in the way that took us a lot of time to understand it by drawing um, what we wanted to do somehow. Again, the material is super important in the building. Everything has been built in, uh, with bricks uh, in order to activate this, even more this relationship with the, with the context no? and to give to the building this kind of industrial uh, resonances that I, I mentioned before. No? So um, after that, I will present to you the two, uh, the other project very quickly, and then we will pass to the last project in, here in Miami. Uh, for many years, we work in a very dense uh, context and, and, and sensible context. Uh, and maybe this also, this condition uh, help us to, to define this kind of theoretical approach uh, of our practice. No? But starting in 2015, so our office started to have other commission, other project more in, in, in different contexts. We started to work uh, here in, in US, but also in Asia. And we had the opportunity to have uh, uh, a commission for an artist uh, presidency or atelier in, in London. You know? um, at least this project uh, uh, was built as a space for artists. Uh, then when it has been finalized, uh, the client decided to modified the, the program. Now uh, it's not more an artist residence, but it's uh, a space for artists. Um, but uh, it was born in, in this way. Let's say that it was a different approach in the, by the client. I mean, because the, the client got in contact with eight architects. Uh, I think it was six, six British firms and two Spanish firms. And we had to work all, all, all together. We had to work at the same place at the same time but without knowing um, the works done by the others. So we were, it was a kind of blinded, blinded uh, uh, process. Somehow we couldn't, we, we couldn't see what the others were doing and we were all working at the same time at the same place. So and the project is uh, uh, localized in the green, in London, in the Greenwich uh, Peninsula. This is an historical picture of this area. This area essentially was a place for small industries, uh, uh, factories, warehouse, uh, gas elements. The, the gasometer. So it was really a very far, a place very far away from the city center, essentially an industrial area. So uh, year after, essentially all these uh, uh, elements uh, in factories, industry, were completely demolished. And the Greenwich Peninsula 
became essentially a tabula rasa. It was nothing. Uh, no urban elements, no references, just a flat soil and nothing. And this, it was really the first time that we worked in this kind of condition. All our project was extension of something or, or building that are, were really uh, deeply uh, um, involved in, in, in very consolidated context, typical of or uh, typical European context, but here we wanted, uh, we had uh, the opportunity, but also the difficulties to facing really a tabula rasa. How to uh, continue with the approach that they used before, this idea to work in continuity to deal with the specificity of a place, how to know in this kind of context. That is maybe a context that also uh, a similar context we deal in. in Japan or also here in, in, Miami. in, in Miami, for not so radical, but in some way. So this tab in, in, in this Tabula Rasa, uh, there was a huge master plan that the promoter, the city of London said that they want to transform it in this area. So they started with the dome by Richard Rogers here that was made for the, I don't know, remember, for the millennium, for the in 2000, I think, a step by step, they want to create this new uh, part of the city. Um, in the middle of this uh, skyscraper city, right here, uh, the client organized what they call it a design district. No? So a small campus composed by 16 small buildings dedicated to host uh, creative industries in some way. No? So how to work in this kind of context in some way? No? This is the master plan. And here there are our two buildings. No? We had the opportunity to work with this two buildings. And this was really a challenge for us. Um, this two building one was completely, or will be in the future, completely surrounded by other uh, buildings. And the other was uh, had the opportunity to establish a more precise link with a small plaza in the middle of this new campus, uh, but also to facing some way this new park that will be built here. You know? So, um, how, how how to work in this condition? For for us, uh, to be sure, wasn't very easy at the beginning, you know? but step by step. So uh, we started to think uh, to a more dream-like approach, let me say like, like in, in this way. No? So uh, we started to thinking that uh, in order to preserve a certain kind of specificity in the content, doesn't mean just to establish a direct relationship with the material fact, the material reality that is right, but also you can establish a kind of uh, yeah, more dream-like relationship or uh, with what has been this place in some way. No? So for the reason we started to uh, envision the proposal as a very pragmatic building, because we, they, they, we were asking just to make space for artists or creative people in some way. So in a very pragmatic way, and we started to uh, think in the problem, uh, we wanted just to make the best place for this, uh, uh, for the artist. And one way to um, work, to create architecture, really to uh, preserve in some way or, or continues to work with the original character of this area, with this kind of uh, in, in, in industrial atmosphere that uh, established the first Greenwich Peninsula. No? And so we organized two uh, similar uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. Uh, working just with uh, the opening in some way, and in which how to organize the facade was crucial in order to establish this kind of relationship with a, a forgotten past. The differences of the materiality of two buildings was essentially relating with the position of these two elements. One completely surrounded by things, the other a little bit more in an open condition, able to establish a relationship with the plaza and the, and the park. Without context, without neighbors, without uh, something physical surrounding us somehow, 
we just used somehow it was the most representative element for us as industrial uh, as an industrial element. If if you have been in London and you have passed uh, passed some some of these areas, I mean, uh, probably the, the windows are the most characteristic elements somehow in in these industrial buildings. So we decided to play just with that element, how to use that element as an expressive element, an element that for sure introduces, I mean, or help us to have the best conditions inside the ateliers. But on the other hand, as the element that help us to establish a dialogue and not direct dialogue with the existing because the existing gone, was gone, but at least something that could reflect this idea of an industrial architecture within a site that is gonna be transformed completely but that it has its its roots. I mean, the fact of demolishing the system, the fact of transforming completely in something, doesn't mean that you need to forget, need to forget what was there before. And this is something that we wanted to keep somehow. So, uh, how to build the the the, 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 the materiality of uh, uh, of the building was crucial in order to establish uh, this relationship as Alberto explained. Uh, right now, so we focus our attention on a very pragmatic building, just a square building, super simple, in which the opening were characterized the building and characterize also the interior space. We decided to wrap in some way this uh, uh, very basic building with this type of uh, huge uh, windows. Uh, this is an image during the construction with the first building, uh, you know, in which we uh, really uh, wanted to, in the middle of the future noise, because uh, as Alberto say, we didn't, uh, uh, was forbidden to discover what uh, was together, uh, what was next to our building. Um, and really we, I don't know, we didn't want it to add more things to this place. So in some way we wanted to, this kind of, emphasize this kind of dream-like approach to the root of this element, also through, through the materiality of this building. This materiality is, 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 is cladded in, in, in steel, and it permits that this building in some way disappeared in, inside of, of the core. This is a, a final realization of the entire campus. One is there, the building cladding in reflective Steel and the other is here that faces the future, the future, um, the future park and the plaza, which is placed in, in the middle there. No? So, and the result is this kind of very big. So, just space for art, very pragmatic, let them to use the building as they wanted in some way. And through the materiality, through the facade, through this uh, simple, very simple. Uh, uh, organization of the window, try at least to establish this uh, link, oniric link with the roots mm -hmm. of this of this place. As in Kurs in Lausanne, um, and in a context completely different, we don't have a language, as Trevi to said, but these two builders, they try to transmit this, this, I mean, this, I mean, something really important for us, this idea that we do architecture with intention to last, something that can really be root in the places where we work, something that, I mean, even these light prefab buildings, uh, that, which are placed in this uh, kind of crazy uh, neighborhood, the buildings just declares, I mean, the importance of belonging to this area and are designed with the same, with, with, with the same intention, trying to last in this place. So these are a few images of the two uh, building. Uh, as I mentioned, super simple, compact, pragmatic building with an interior concrete structure and that's uh, with the opening that mark this kind of very flexible space. Uh, quickly, the section has been studied in order to be the most efficient, the most efficient inside a very complex rule that we cannot explain now. In the internally, we use very basic material, uh, the, the, the cheapest one uh, in some way. And we just organize this space around the central core, uh, take advantage of the light, essentially. 
that come in inside of, of the building. And it is just a, a, a background and the, later the, the, the people that will use it, they will transform, appropriate. It's just a kind of, uh, yeah, a frame or basic things that uh, should be used by, by artists and so on, uh, with very basic and simple material. Uh, has been a reflection really for us, an exercise about to think it, how will be our city in the future. Maybe this type of things will happen more and more in, in our city, in our periphery. No. So how to face in this kind of condition. This image uh, showed quite well uh, uh, yeah, the, the result of this exercise, no? how to compose in some way uh, a new landscape for, for our city or what we can do in the future. Uh, the last project, uh, very quickly, is uh, the project that we are doing here in Miami. Uh, I have to confess that Alberto and me, we really uh, love this project <laughs> <laughs> in some way. Uh, this project will be our very uh, first project here in in US. And I think it's a project that really mark where are we now and in, in what we are doing. It, it's really representative, I think, of our practice in some way. So um, uh, three years ago, we participated in a competition uh, for doing this new artist residence uh, here in Miami for ULITE. Uh, for uh, what's ULITE? Light is a great, very important, fascinating, no-profit organization uh, dedicated to support young artists. Uh, they essentially provide artists that start uh, with spaces, with studio in which they can work uh, during one year, I think, they gave them uh, help in order to start their activity in some way, no? uh, without any profit in some way. No? Uh, they wanted to create a kind of uh, community of artists here in Miami. Uh, they want to promote also art. They organize uh, presentation, uh, lecture. They wanted to um, I don't know, explore the consciousness of the value of the art into the community. Ulay tries to, I mean, they use an expression which is quite very, very nice. I mean, help the artists to help themselves to become professionals somehow. They wanted to become professionals, so they help them to explore themselves how to get to that point. So the, the program in itself is wonderful. No, it's really, it's really, and, and also for us it was really an, an occasion really to go deep in what it means to do an artist resident and create a community with artists, et cetera, et cetera. Ulite now is based in uh, uh, Miami Beach uh, and they in the future, and they have uh, uh, acquired a new uh, site in north of Miami, in the Little uh, River District here. No? It's an area that uh, you probably know better than us, is in, a, in which there is a huge transformation. Many gallery, artists, uh, institutions are moving, are moving there. No? So our site is here in the London region, this very elongated uh, um, um, and, and narrow site in the, this quarter. And this map represents a little bit a little how it's the context. No? Here there is a huge residential area with small uh, houses in some way. No? And there is a kind of industrial area that sits along the train uh, uh, tracks, for example, here and there, no? this area. Yeah, this image, this area it may show a little bit more how is the context. Now, this area here now is residential, also here, quite green, so way here in Miami. The, the, the vegetation is wonderful, powerful strands, no? so here is quite natural. But this area along the train, the train cross here and there, no? this is a very harsh environment in some way in which there are warehouses, some of them abandoned, some they are, yeah, they are doing a lot of, they are 
there are people that transform in the center, but it's a very hard environment in some way, you know, in which there's no vegetation uh, in some way. You know. And this is an aerial view of our site. Our site is this one, you know, and sits along the train and the, the main accent is from the street that I forgot the number of the street, but anyway, it's, it's this one now. And these are warehouse that will be demolished because they are very... So the program of this project is really fascinating. It's, it's, it's wonderful in some way. They, uh, Ulaid, want to build uh, uh, 20 studio. 20. 20 oh, studio. 20, studio, 20 small studio for young artists, one a little bit bigger studio for an invited international artist, and facilities for uh, the, uh, the artist. There is an art gallery in which the artist can present their own work. Uh, there's a library, there is uh, spaces for workshop or uh, making ceramic or print in which is educational spaces in which they can uh, promote uh, presentation or uh, courses for the community and so on. And also a quite big theater uh, for projection or for performance and then for sure the administration. So this kind of wonderful project uh, for young artists, but also related with the uh, larger community in some way. Ulaid has the, 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 the dream of Ulaid is to help uh, young artists, but also to help the community, the larger community, the neighborhood, to feel the importance of art in some way. Mm -hmm. no? So these are a few images of the our site is behind here. You for sure are very familiar with this type of environment, but when we started to work here, we weren't <laughs> familiar with this type of, of context that for us that come from Europe, it's uh, very uh, unexpected, very different of what we um, uh, are used. It, it, it was even very different to what we had in mind when thinking about Miami. No? So somehow coming from abroad and dis discovering this site, was a kind of uh, surprise for us. So inside of this uh, site, uh, essentially, we had the opportunity to build a certain square, um, a certain dimension in some way, but there, there wasn't a precise rule about the height of the building. Essentially, we wanted, the, we had the opportunity to go very vertical in some way because like, I think we can build until 10, ten. Uh, yeah, ten uh, floors, Story. 10 stories. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so these are very initial study we did, uh, and, and we didn't know exactly what to do if uh, to do a very compact building, preserve the space or whatever. No? But step by step, um, we started to feel the necessity to fragment in some way project to fragment it, it to extend it, it to occupy the the uh, the place instead of going vertical that probably was the most uh, efficient and economical relevant uh, proposal but uh, we started to understand that the project should be very low very extensive uh, because one of the most important things of this project was really to have the capacity to build a new community or a sense of community between the artists, but also from the artists and the, the neighborhood in some way. You know? So we started to understand that the project, instead to create this very pragmatic, compact, vertical element, probably should be, uh, be very elongated, very fragmented in order to really permit to the artists, but also the community, the visitor to enter it and enjoy this project. So at the beginning, we had the idea that maybe this new community, uh, how to create community. So probably to commit a tools in order to do it was just to create a garden. A garden, an enclosed garden in some way, inside of this industrial area 
white tarsh, right, without vegetation, uh, deep, very different from the other residential hall, and made the gardens a tool that permit to, to generate uh, community. We started to understand that probably the, the, uh, the building uh, should be composed by a sequence of rooms. And so we, everyone dedicated with a, with a program around this new green uh, core in some way. No? Uh, maybe this idea of enclosure, that idea to, to build just the perimeter, to keep the center, well, permit to emphasize this sense of, uh, uh, of belonging to, to a community in some way. No? So the project started to evolve really in, and we focus our attention not in the building itself, but what's happening in the middle of the building. We started to dreaming about promenade that can cross the building uh, that could uh, a very porous building in, in, in some way but later on there was an important moment in the process no the, the main element was the studio for an artist and we start to understand that how a, a part to create community and ensemble in some way every single element should work with light because when you have to make a studio for art or a gallery, working with light is a crucial element, no? is the, it's really the, the key element. So we started to envisioning a single cell, the studio, that was characterized by light. And characterized by light, meaning probably to be characterized just by one skylight in some way, like a small house with a chimney, but this chimney is the skylight in some way. No? And step by step, we start to understand that maybe the building could be composed by just the collection of this uh, single uh, uh, studio characterized by, by light. No? So um, these are other um, study models we'll, we'll did in which we discover that the aggregation of this very simple element would really create uh, a, 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 a landscape. Because one of the most important thing for us, what we like to do, and it's, I think it's, it's evident also in what we presented, it, we just we don't want just to create architecture, but we we love to create or try at least to create a place, you know, to create an urban place, so to create a, understand architecture as a landscape, as, a, an, ar, an, as an artificial landscape. You know? So the aggregation of this single element, this kind of house-like type cell decoration could really create this unexpected uh, landscape in which you can move and you can have really an unexpected uh, situation. No? So, and we started really to uh, to love this, this approach because uh, it's a simple, super simple approach in which you declare that the building is for artists because it's characterized by light. You declare this is a building that want to create community around a garden is pre prioritize the public uh, space but it's also is a building that is not just architecture but it want to create a, a place so we started to envisioning how these different element or cluster characterized by the skylight could compose this new landscape you no know? A simple way or whatever. No? These are all sketches we did at the very beginning. No? And, and suddenly, step by step, we uh, started to love to envision in this project as a kind of village for artists in some way, a small village in the middle of a gigantic city as, as Miami. No? And, and, and the idea of the village uh, also establish a really a direct link with the idea of to create a community, to create an ensemble, to create a, a, and to force this kind of civic, civic and public architecture. And so we, even, and, and the notion, this notion of public and civic architecture maybe is very deeply rooted in our background in Europe, but maybe here in the US, not so much, no? So we, um, we really wanted to, to create this, this ensemble focus about how to create a civic public architecture community. So the aggregation of this element, so step by step, in order to achieve all the requirement, programmatic, et cetera, et cetera, 
uh, reorganize the building essentially as a plinth, a modeled plinth or perforated plinth in which contains a new garden, no? in which every studio has its own uh, skylight in some way. No? And this permits to, uh, to put in a very synthetic way together all the, uh, all the desire that we had. So this is a final model of one cell. No, this represents one studio. One studio has always a windows that permit to establish a relationship with the garden, that is the key element of the project, and a skylight no? that bring the northern light into the studio. This is the windows means it's help to to create community, the different studio can be, the artist can be, see what's happening inside of the other studio, etc. And this is a very functional and pragmatic element to, to bring the light. And then, so this step by step, we try to simplify, organize, organize all these elements in a more, how to say, sequenced way, clear way. No? So, and this sketch is so this plinth that create uh, this kind of uh, carved enclosure or create this prominent in which you have this all this kind of small tower or chimneys or whatever uh, or this element also has this kind of we, we, we love to imagine that this has um, again a, a link with this industrial warehouse that's around this building and this is the final result uh, a very, or at least we intend to see, unexpected building. What is this? Uh, but essentially, it's a plinth that contains the aggregation of uh, different rooms, which are the studios. Uh, there is a garden inside of this carved plinth, and then all these towers represent different things. Then we will see uh, the Essentially, it's explained that this is a building for art, that building with, uh, with light. At the end here, there is the, <coughs> the, the, the theater. Uh, this plinth, there is the main, let's say, there's not the main, but uh, the, the, yeah, the main entrance is here. This is the, main, the, the train cross here. So, but then the plinth have, uh, it's quite porous. We have this opening tree in the north, three in the south, and this entry. So you can enter whatever you want. Um, we wanted to create a landscape, a landscape, a place, an artificial uh, place, an unexpected place, able to create community, as I mentioned, able to really force the civic and public condition of this, uh, uh, this, this building, to highlight this, uh, this condition, but always in a very synthetic, primary, basic things. It's just a room with a skylight, no more than this. No? And this is uh, one infography that we made uh, during the study process. Uh, and what is nice in some ways is that you start to see the new building, and you start really to understand architecture like a small city, as a village that establish a relationship with the skyline of the new Miami here. You know? and, and, and inside of this, we have this new garden. This is a new community for artists. And, and the fact also, so now the, the, the little river and the environment is like this. What's no we don't know exactly what will happen in the future here. We know that it, there is a really important transformation of all the, the port here. Probably here in the future, there will be maybe, I don't know, tower or the buildings, et cetera, et cetera. No? So we really wanted to, to understand the, the project has a new uh, public core, also for the future development of this, of this uh, uh, of this area, no? and, and also, uh, so this is another reason why we organize all the projects just in one level. Also, in our, we have to say also we we lost probably the the, the uh, I don't know it's an, an important economical uh, uh, operation 
because we uh, convince our classes in some way to lose also the opportunity to make a much bigger building. No? But for us, really, and also the client, who like understand the, import, the importance to, to uh, um, the social importance of this building inside of the future uh, Little River. So, um, the plan is very simple. And this is east, the main entry, the other entry here, for sure they, it's uh, completely public. You can move whatever you want here, no? But for security reasons, during the night could be easily closed. Uh, it's organized by different clusters, no? Every cluster contain a uh, different problem. The studio, this is one studio, another studio, another studio, the big studio, no? And, and all the, cl every cluster has a small, we call it enclosed garden, essentially it's a porch uh, that in, from where you can enter in the different studio. No? So uh, this is the, uh, the gallery, the main gallery placed in the middle of the ensemble, administration, theater, other studios, uh, educational areas. So every, it's really great. Uh, it's similar to a small village, so simple like that in some way. No? And, and, and all this green area essentially is the garden. No? So it's this, it's a kind of valley in some way, no? carved valley. No? Um, the upper floor, the rooftop could be used as central century. But there was another important, very, very important moment during the development of the project. So I explained you the genesis of the building, but at some times, uh, but at some point, um, we wanted to give to this tower more meaning, more, uh, uh, should be more important. No? So we started to uh, thinking that this element that originally uh, was a skylight could be more meaning, could be really a tools in order also to control uh, the climate of the building. And make a building much more sustainable and efficient in terms of to, uh, uh, yeah, to the climate control. So we started to work with uh, the specialists in, 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 the, in the climate control, the environment, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we started to understand that probably all this tower could, be, uh, could have different uses. So the majority of them are skylight and they are facing north, but some of them uh, are wind catchers. The tower that above the porch, they uh, act as a wind catcher in order to emphasize and uh, help the natural ventilation of the space. Some other uh, towers will be um, uh, solar, solar chimneys. And so another mechanism in order to uh, help the ventilation and reduce the mechanical uh, ventilation of the space. And some other are water tanks that permit to collect the water. So um, the mechanism of all this tower is quite complex because for sure we have air conditioning, but this element permit to reduce the consumption and help the, the, the machine to to work in some way, just to be very simple and basic. But the important things uh, is that uh, this element permits in order to create a holistic, uh, uh, sustainable vision for the building in some way. And what is really nice for us is that this element uh, assume different meaning. They declare this is a space for artists, but also they have a, 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 an energetical function. No? And also, this is not just an element, an aesthetic element for the building, but it's a, really a very pragmatic functional element. No? So functionality, pragmatism, uh, uh, consciousness of the necessity of a sustainability architecture uh, links together with, uh, um, with uh, an architectural vision in some way. No? And this is what I think it's really important in this project, no? because everything convey in just one thing that assume different uh, meanings. Hmm. Uh, I think that perhaps for you, I mean, it looks like 
something random. No, but I, there's nothing random in this design. I mean, this, what Pavita was explaining, I mean, always finding a meaning, always finding the need for, for something, finding an argument for something. It's, it's, when we design, it's not just us. I mean, it's not just what we want to do. We need to find really arguments and reasons that help the design to improve, but help us to really transmit something with the design. And this idea of linking a desire with a function, linking with a need, linking somehow uh, what we want to achieve um, as architects with, with something that really improves, in this case, for example, and the environment and helps the building to, to behave better somehow within the environment. I think that's something that uh, after this project is going to shape somehow in a stronger way. Uh, I mean, the way we see architecture nowadays. So the building is completely made in concrete. Uh, it's quite enigmatic in some way from outside. Uh, it's just this kind of weird element, very simple, plinth, tower, what is it? No? Uh, but suddenly you discover that uh, uh, this simple element is much more porous. You can enter from the train, from the other, from the south, from the west, in which there is the main entry. Uh, you discover the meaning the, the, of all this, all, all, all this tower. And when you, and suddenly you have, you, we wanted to create this as study images, but we did. Um, so there is a kind of surprise. What's up behind this hermetic building in some way? You know? So these two towers mark the entry in this new of, uh, we envision it really, this is a very special place in some way. A new, it's, it's a new artificial uh, landscape, or at least we understand this project like this. This tower will be characterized, uh, the, 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 the place with the light, also the big shadow, et cetera, et cetera. And in, in the interior, there will be a kind of exuberant garden that also will be helped to control the, the light inside of the of the spaces, et cetera. So it's a kind of promenade, it's a kind of val artificial valley that in which you can move freely. It's a space in which really, at least what we want to really to 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 the uh, transmit to the idea to the artist to belong to this this community because they can enjoy this space, but also it's a space for community in which the visitor can just enter, stay there, uh, go to the theater or to the lecture or, or whatever. No, uh, so everything is solved or or just with element with this vertical element. No. Uh, this, for example, is facing north, it's a skylight. Uh, another, uh, the, the wind catcher are a small, a small opening uh, uh, east west because there is a breeze coming from the ocean. Uh, the solar chimney have the opening in the south in order to heat the, the tower in some way. It's an artificial landscape. So this is um, um, we, what we want to, to do here, for example, uh, there is uh, this port, what we close and close at garden. The vegetation will be inside of this element and from the porch, you can enter in the different uh, uh, studios. Just concrete, inside, outside. Uh, technical drawing, no, we made a UG14 in order to, you know, we know that it's quite difficult to work in US with concrete, but, uh, we we will accept this challenge in some way. There's some other views from the train. Um, it's 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 a project with many challenges, not because I mean uh, because of the program, because of the nature of the building. I mean, you need to deal with we we need to deal with with opposites. I mean, you need to generate an atmosphere for the artist, intimate, private spaces where they can be concentrated. On the other hand, you need to deal with the publicness, with the spirit of the building. I mean, uh, how to generate community, how to organize a public space, how to organize in a space where uh, the neighbors can just look at the artist and the artist can just look at the neighbors and can establish this conversation between them. So I mean, it's, a, it's somehow a project that obliges us always to deal with, with this continuous contradiction, no? how to generate intimacy, but on the other hand, how to have a public space. How to 
yeah, uh, confront both realities because that's in the nature of full light somehow. Oh, well, details, I don't know. Uh, windows are also vitrine in which artists can present their works and establish the relationship between the public garden and the interior. But anyway, so um, some other quickly section, this is the enclosed garden because we are a little bit longer with the timing. So this is enclosed enough from which you can enter in the different uh, spaces. This is a studio, typical studio with the skylight and the opening towards the towards the garden. Some other section you here you can see how this vertical element act, but I think this is the gallery with a huge window in which the people can. So here is the gallery in which the art present work and the garden. So establish this continuum inside outside relationship. Uh, that we know is very, very important here in, uh, in Miami. So, studio, um, the maker space, maker space, uh, the auditorium. But these are uh, less relevant. So I think um, in, uh, I don't know, I think it's a really, for us, it's uh, this project is really important project. It's Mark really thinks, it's declare what we want to do. It's really a super synthetic building, very pragmatic, just tower and a plinth, nothing more than this. But it declared this profound civic um, um, understanding of public architecture that uh, for us is sort of crucial. It's a building that is uh, as a consciousness of the environment, of the environment, the importance of to. Uh, built uh, sustainable building and uh, yeah and uh, it's, it's something that uh, i just would add that it's it's a, it's a building design probably not for miami it's designed specifically for this this plot this corner it's very very specific and this climate and this climate but on the, on the other hand um it has strength by itself from our point of view it's autonomous it's it's we we hope and we think that it's a building that can transmit things by itself even if if you delete somehow the context and you forget about miami it's something that expresses uh somehow uh meaning by itself without the context but on the on the other hand it's very very specific it's for little haiti it's just for this neighborhood just for this artist and for the community and somehow this reflects, or this takes us again to the beginning of the lecture. Somehow this con constant search that we have about this contradiction, uh, how to be specific in a side, and how to be autonomous, because to be autonomous help us to transmit things with our work. And that's probably the most important, how to transmit things with what you do. Thank you.